cats. Well, dig it. Check it. Check it out. The doctor said that Bukovac is actually check for fast healing. That's my microwave going off back there. So sorry about that. But yeah, I hope you guys are doing great. It's coming along, you know. Doesn't hurt like it used to, and that's nice. But it's one of the, this is just gonna be like a half volume. This won't be like a full volume. This will just be a quick. Just wanted to check in. It's been a while. I know you guys had a few concerned people, you know. But I've I've been really busy with my boys the last three days. We we've, we've been having a blast. I haven't touched a guitar, which is very common because I like to totally get into it when I'm when I'm with them. You know, just man, we've been playing tons of basketball. Uh, old Larry's out there sweating. I mean, to say that it is hot and humid around here lately is the gross understatement of the century. It's so hot outside that it's like comical. And the and the, the mugginess just grabs you, strangles you to the point where you, you just have to just let go. And you're just like, okay, I'm just gonna pour sweat and just get through this, pray for fall. Yeah, so um, got a few quick VCB things. Uh, remember this guitar? This was the... Um, my first guitar, my first good guitar. Christmas 1980. You've heard the story before. Pulled this from behind the couch on Christmas Day. My family chipped in the $500 to buy this new from Willow Music in uh, Willoughby, Ohio. Ed Kriz. And I've had it all these years, you know. So, yeah, I don't sell everything. But, yeah, I've had this for a long time. And here's a vintage Maxwell House mug. One thing I'm very excited is that we we spent the whole weekend working on this, me and the boys. We got one of these really cool um, separating uh, compartment things from TJ Maxx, and we've been we've got all the NFL teams in here from our vibrating football games. There's your Bills. I've got eight of the 32 teams. You want to see the Browns? They're, these are all hand painted, you know. Imagine the guy who sits around all day and paints these. Imagine it. What a job that would be. I mean, how many of these could you do before you completely lost your mind? Maybe they give them to inmates. Who knows? That'd be nice for an inmate. Give you something to do. I also wanted to say thank you to a guy named Randy Heston for sending this really cool, old school Rolling Rock thermometer that he found somewhere at some antique store. Dude, Randy, it's very cool. Um, thank you for that. And Strat Magic, Jeffrey sent me a box full of cool magazines and random stuff. Thank you for that, Strat Magic. You guys don't have to do all this stuff. I appreciate the kindness, friends, and I appreciate all the PayPal donations you guys have sent. And, uh, you know, it's all working out. I've kept the lights on for three years now. There's many times along the journey when I thought I was going to give up on homeschooling, but, you know, I try to ignore all the bad and, and just take in the good. And once I learned the 80-20 rule, I was good. You know, I thought it was me in the early days that, that was causing all these, these negative comments and these people just unhappy people. I couldn't understand why they didn't, they couldn't just turn off a free video. Why did they have to say something nasty? And then I realized Christ himself could come back to life and start a YouTube channel where he's, he's playing guitar and saying, hey man, here's some shit I learned when I was, when I was dead all those years. And everyone would be like, there'd be 80% of the people that thought it was amazing. And then 20% would be like, yeah, I liked your old shit better, Christ. You know. Guitar players are funny, man. They have a, a way of wording things that is particularly cunty when they when they want to be nasty. It's it's uh, I mean that in the English way, you know, not the American way, you know, the more playful, jovial way. But yeah, um, overall, I've learned a lot, and and I stay here for the good people, the the ones that are cool, that say cool things, and they 
and they, you know, they get it. They get what's happening here. They get that this is just a broken old guy sharing his life with with anyone that is interested, you know. That's all. They, they get that. That's really all it is. Mm-hmm. So, a few VCB things. Um, um, let's see. How many, hey, Tom, how many guitars do you own? That's, that's a fun question. Um, everyone thinks I have a million guitars, but I don't. Um, I actually have way less total instruments than virtually all of my friends who do this for a living. Um, uh, total instruments. This includes basses. You know, banjos, acoustics, dobros, uh, lap steels. I have less than 50 total instruments, which is not bad for a guy who, you know, who does this for a living. You know, I've always been more like, you know, quality over quantity. You know, like I've said many times, I would much rather have one perfectly set up guitar than five guitars that need a little bit of work. See, that's where I'm at in life. The ones that I've got, there's not many, but the ones that I've got are dialed in. I, I, I stop at nothing to make them perfect. And if, if a guitar can go through the rigorous things that it needs to go through to satisfy me, um, there's, there's many boxes that have to be checked. But if a guitar can make it through all that boot camp, and I still like it, man, it must be a, it must be a special instrument. And those are the ones that I keep. I kept this one just because it's kind of sentimental. It's it's a piece of shit. It's a late seventies Norlin uh, junker. You know, these guys couldn't make a guitar to save their ass in this period. But I love it because it's sentimental to me, and uh, you know. It's cool. Uh, far cry from a 58 burst, I will say, but but it's still fun and I love it. And I, I, this is my only guitar for a long, long time. And all this wear on this guitar, I did myself. Playing Burning For You and Fantasy by Aldo Nova and Abacab by Genesis. Here's that. try to go to that C chord, I could never get it in tune. And I remember that feeling. I didn't learn how to do that until many years later to get a guitar in tune. I didn't, I didn't learn how to do that. I remember this guitar never being in tune when I was a kid. And it drove me crazy even back then. Uh... All right. Hey, Tom, here's a weird one. How does a man make some money in this life? Man, you're asking the wrong guy. I mean, I, I have friends that are totally broke. I have friends that are literally billionaires, the richest people in the world. Uh, I would say on a scale of uh, one to 10 of, of wealth, I would rate myself at about a three and uh, I'm proud to be a three because that's hard to get to, you know? Um, money is a funny thing. I've got lots of beliefs about money. I tell my, my boys this money is, 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 is like an addiction for some people, you know? Um, I, all I ever wanted was enough money to be comfortable, right? That's all I ever wanted. And I've, I've been able to achieve that. I mean, comfortable. I mean, like, yes, there's plenty of things in this life that I would love that I can't afford. But if I need to go to the grocery store and buy a bunch of stuff, I don't have to worry about it. If I need to pay the bills, I don't have to worry about the money. You know, that, if I want to buy my boys something special one day, blow a couple hundred bucks on them, I can do it. 
And I consider that to be success. Um, I've always considered that to be financial success. Have a couple cool guitars, um, you know, have a decent house to live in. You win, okay? Yes, it would be nice to have private planes like some of my buddies. And you know, I'll tell you who's rich. Holy shit. I don't, I don't often do this. I've only been to Costco a couple times. But whoever owns Costco is fucking rich. I mean, I was, there are just droves of people pushing out carts full of stuff that they paid hundreds of dollars for, and they have to pay to shop. I mean, whoever, whoever started Costco, I looked it up yesterday, I was fascinated. It started in 1976 by these two dudes. See, that's the thing, man. I always say about money, people ask me about money, young kids, guitar players, you know, how do you make money? There's money laying all over the streets, man. You just got to figure out a way to bend over and pick it up, okay? What I mean by that is that these two dudes that started Costco, I don't know who they are, Jeffrey somebody, um, they looked around, and I don't, even, I don't even know them, but I know what they, what they were doing. They, they, they looked around and they thought they saw a niche somewhere that was not fulfilled, and they thought, we could do this. You know, we could do this. And no one's doing this before. What I mean by that, you got to figure out what people want. And then you got to figure out a way to give it to them. That's how you make money in this life. This is what, I, this is what I've noticed. Okay, I'm no expert. I'm not trying to be fucking, uh, what's his name? Uh, that guy that gives everybody financial advice. I don't know shit. I'm just telling you. If you can find something in this world that somebody needs, people need, and you can figure out a way to give it to them, you're going to make some money. Uh, that goes for music. Figure out a niche that you can provide that no one else is doing. When I started my little music store, right, um, I realized in Nashville, there's you got two kind of music stores in Nashville. you got super high-end vintage, super expensive, and then you've got places that sell nothing but brand new stuff, right? So I thought, when I was a kid, there was music stores that had used gear for working man's prices. And I thought, there's nobody in Nashville doing that. There used to be a store called Broadway Music that did it. And everybody misses that store, but it closed down. So I thought, I'll start a store that is not high-end vintage and it's not all new stuff. It's like used consignment gear for working men. And man, as soon as I started that thing, the place took off because I knew people wanted that, right? And we ran for three years. And the only reason we ever closed down was because me and my partner couldn't get along because um, he was so negative about everything. And I'm super positive. I love Rick. Rest his soul. Love you, Rick. I'll see you in a few, in a few years. Uh, but, dude, that place, would I could have kept that going as long as I wanted. And... uh because there's no place in Nashville to buy, you know, working man's used gear. Nobody wants to walk in a music store and see all brand new stuff. And a lot of people don't want to walk in a music store and see all these fifty, thirty thousand dollar guitars. They can't afford it. I figured right in the middle is where you want to be. And it worked. This is just one example of a way that a person can make some money. But then I realized after opening that store, it's a terrible business model because there is nobody more broke than musicians. I didn't realize how broke musicians were until I started that music store. I always kind of knew it. But so you got to figure out a way to target some people that actually have some money. This is why all the music stores in, in the United States are closed down because nobody, musicians don't have any money. That's the fact, right? So that's, you know, a little uh, armchair quarterback financial advice from a guy. Uh, who plays guitar for a living. Take that for what it's worth, okay? Um, but there might be something there you can use. This book says, The Greatest Pedals of All Time. I haven't looked at it yet. What is The Greatest Pedal of All Time? That's a good question. I know what my choice is. What's your choice?
do we have to choose major or minor? Can we have both? Can we be like... Class dismissed. It, sure, it ended up being a full volume. Okay, bye.